biologists. In this session, we're going to be taking a look at the structure of starch, uh, glycogen, and also cellulose molecules. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is starch. Now, starch is made up of two polysaccharides. It's made up of amylose and amylopectin. Now, amylose, as you can see here, amylose is made of uh, alpha-1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. It's made of alpha glucose and they are in a one to four glycosidic bond arrangement so as you can see here i've got carbons one linking up to carbon four of the next molecule so between carbon one of one molecule here and carbon four of the other molecule so because we've got this alpha one to four glycosidic bond it means that this um amylose is actually appearing in a coiled like structure so because of these bonds these alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds i get this nice coiling structure of my amylose now amylose um, because it is coiled it's compact for you get marks for these things so it's compact it's um it doesn't affect osmotic potential um but it is really really good for storage um, so that makes amylose ideal for starch because it is it's really, really good for storage. Now, amylopectin, which also makes up starch, has got an alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bond, but it's also got an alpha 1 to 6. So here you can see I've got my alpha, alpha molecules. I've got my 1 to 4 glycosidic bond down here, but amylopectin has also got a 1 to 6, whereby my carbon 1 of mo one molecule is can be attached to a carbon 6 my side chain now this creates branches within my molecule and and these branches are really really good because it allows hydrolysis of the end of the ends by enzymes to create these monosaccharides again that which are then available for aerobic respiration so all of that is taken directly from the mark scheme which you need to be aware of so starch is made of amylose, which has got alpha, alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. This creates a coiled compact structure, which does not affect osmotic potential, and it's ideal because it's compact. And amylopectin, which also makes up starch, has got alpha 1 to 4 and alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds, creating branches which are really good for the hydrolysis of the end monomers by enzymes to create alpha glucose. Glycogen is also a similar uh, kind of molecule in that it's made of alpha 1 to 4 and alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds. And again, it's similar properties. So this is a, it won't affect osmotic potential. It's going to be compact. And I've also got lots of ends here so they can be hydrolyzed by enzymes to create my alpha glucoses again, which are available therefore for respiration. So when they're all uh, joined together like this in glycogen, um, they cannot be used in aerobic respiration. They have to break them down by hydrolysis to get those individual monomers. So both starch and glycogen are made of alpha glucose. They're both storage molecules of carbohydrates. Uh, starch is found in plants, whereas glycogen is stored in mammalian livers. So they're very similar in their makeup uh, and in their properties. So the next one um, is cellulose. And um, cellulose creates, is formed from beta glucose. Now, as, as mentioned before, whenever I've got lots of beta glucoses joined together, every alternate beta glucose will orientate itself 180 degrees so that I can get these glycosidic bonds forming. So I've still got a one to four glycosidic bond here, but these are beta. So you need to state which monomer it is. So it's a beta one to four glycosidic bond. Now, as a result of these beta one to four glycosidic bonds, I have these side chains sticking up uh, and then sticking down and then up and then down, so on and so forth. And what happens is, um, I get hydrogen bonds be forming between these chains. And these hydrogen bonds between these chains of, of, of cellulose provide a lot of strength. Now, you don't get any marks here for saying strength. You have to say that it provides a high tensile strength, a high tensile strength, because I have these cross links. Again, that's a key word from your exams. Mark scheme, you have lots of cross links between these microfibrils. So, a microfibril is a, each chain involved here. Now, again, I've got no osmotic potential, it doesn't affect osmosis, and it also is inert, it's unreactive. So um, each of these, as mentioned before, creates hydrogen bonds between each of the strands and then therefore creates a very strong, high tensile strength for, for cellulose fibres in total to make that cell wall. If you want to print that off and have a go, good luck with your exams.